All right, here we go. We have Miami Street Legend Convertible Burt in the building. That'll be me. <laughs> That's right. Hey, man, listen, I've been hearing about you for so many years. Uh, yeah. It's an honor to finally sit down and actually talk. Hey, man, I'm in this mind, man, you know? Okay, so this is your first time here with us. Let's go ahead and start uh, in the very beginning. So you grew up in Liberty City. Yeah, Liberty City is where I'm on, I'm on 15th Avenue. And then, you know, uh, I grew up on 15th Avenue. And then when I turned to about 12 or something, uh, about 12, we moved to like a project called Gray Yard. A PJ, a PJ, a PJ project in Miami called the Gray Yard. Okay, so did you grow up with both parents, one parent? Oh, one parent, you know what I'm saying? My mama did it all, you know? Yeah, okay. Well, where was your father during this time? Uh, you know, he's a roll, you know, he's a rolling stone, you know what I'm saying? Moving around, you know? Yeah, he's a, okay. he, my father's a moving, he's a mover and shaker, you know? Okay, did you know him at all or not really? Yeah, 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 I know him, you know, we, we, you know, we, as I got a little older, and I started making moves and stuff like that. We kind of got close, but then, you know, right, you know, uh, right when we was really, really, you know, you know, building a real strong bond, I, you know, I, I went to the feds, I got knocked off, you know, I got knocked out in Atlanta, and I went to the feds, and, uh, you know, he kind of died like a couple of years later. Gotcha. And we're going to go into that whole story a little bit later, but I just kind of want to lay the foundation of how you grew up. Right. So, you had a single mother, uh, how many brothers and sisters? I got five brothers and sisters from my mother. Yeah, I got, I got, I have three brothers and one sister. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the baby boy. Okay, so here you got five kids and a single mother. Right. Growing up in the projects. Right. What do you think was the hardest thing, like as a kid, that you went through? Really, you know, uh, you know, really, you know, I, I grow, I when I, when I first start doing things it was like really kind of hard because you know i grew up on 15th avenue that was like one of the main drug scripts in, in in the country at that time in the 80s 70s and 80s you know what i'm saying so you know i grew up around there so you know you know when i when i started getting into it you know what i'm saying it was you know it was like everything environmental you know what i'm saying i didn't choose the game the game chose me coming up you know just being around that environment and being exposed to so much at a very young age I mean, do you remember when crack first hit your neighborhood? Oh yeah, man! In the uh, in the uh, early, early, like uh, mid mid seventies, you know what I'm saying? I remember the first guy that ever did it uh, brought. Uh, really, it wasn't crack at first. It was they used to free base. It used to be a rich man high, and he brought it from California. And a dude name was Mac Bride. He he passed on, but was a major player back in the days and um. You know, he brought that game to Miami. You ain't, ain't nobody know about it before McBride. You know what I'm saying? So he pretty much introduced, you know what I'm saying, Miami to it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and, you know, you have a lot of different street drugs, but, but crack has a very kind of unique effect. Right, on right. On people. Right. You know, it, it, you don't become a crackhead in the first couple of weeks. It, it no. sort of takes time of you right. using over and over again, but as right. you become more and more addicted, Right. It really starts to destroy the whole neighborhood. Right, right, right. But, you know, crack is some. you know, it's it's like after you try it one time, you know what I'm saying, you're always chasing the same, you're chasing that high that you got the first time, but which you never catch again, you know? And that's how you become a crack addict, pretty much. Okay. So at what point did you start getting into the streets? Uh, you ain't gonna believe this, man. You know, I, I, I was introduced to the streets at a very young age, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I was actually in uh, elementary school, you know what I'm saying, 10, 11, 12 years old, 10, 11, 12 years old. And what I used to do, you know what I'm saying, when I come home from school, you know what I'm saying, I used to look out, you know what I'm saying, I used to look out for the, the guys, you know, who was hustling in the street. Okay, so you got hired as a lookout. Yeah, you know, really, you know, you know, it was, I was a kid, you know, you really, you know, it was just they were looking out for me. You know, when I come to school, you know, when the police come or whatever, I tell them the police coming or whatever, and that's how that pretty much started. You know, so I got a very, I got a, you know, I was introduced to a, a lot and exposed to a lot at a very young age. Okay. Well, what point did it go from being a lookout to actually moving it around? Uh, really, you know what I'm saying? That, like that, that's all sort of very young age, you know, because I start, like I said, when we moved over, uh, when we moved over, the, you know, moved in the project, you know, they was, you know, we was hustling around there and that's where we really, 
you know, that's why I really start, you know, hustling weed and stuff like that. And then, you know, gradually as you go along, you know, you go up, you know, you go, I went through the ranks. You know what I'm saying? I went through the ranks, you know what I'm saying? Everything I did, you know what I'm saying? I, I came from the bottom up with it, you know? Yeah. Okay, and a lot of losses go with that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I took the biggest loss because I did a long time in prison, federal prison, you know? So that's okay. the biggest loss, you know what I'm saying, when you lose life for such a long period of time and, you, you know, you lose, like, the most important people in your life, you know what I mean? Like my father, I lost my father, my mother while I was down. So that was a, you know, that was a, you know, that was a, that was a blow to me, you know what I'm saying? That, that, you know, you had to really be strong and pull through, you know? 